it's Courtney. I'm here with another design team project for Scrapping for Less. Today I'm going to be using the Whimsical Wildflower stamp set by Gina K Designs. I'm just going to be using this one image here. I am going to bring out my stamp positioner just because it is a larger image and just in case I needed to stamp it twice. So I'm working on a piece of black cardstock and you'll want to use a pretty heavyweight cardstock for this. This is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just placing my image on the top right hand corner and I'm going to be stamping this with white pigment ink. This is Hero Arts Unicorn White and you just want to dab on your ink for a pigment pad. You don't want to really smush it on there or else you're going to get ink everywhere. Once that was stamped out I rotated my card panel 180 degrees and stamp that again so it's in the same position on both the top and the bottom of the card. So I did only have to stamp this once but you will want to put this aside to dry for I would say at least 10 minutes before you move on to the next step and clean your stamp immediately because pigment ink seems to kind of get everywhere. So we'll move right into the coloring and I'm going to be using my polychromos today. I'm going to show you one entire flower and then I'll show you just basically the color combinations that I used. So here I'm going to start off with one petal at a time. I'm going to go in with a very, very light hand with my white pencil. And then for this particular petal, I'm just going to be adding shading on the bottom and up towards the center a little bit, blending it out each time. I'm working with not a not a real heavy hand, but heavier than I normally do because for the technique that I am doing today, it doesn't matter if your coloring is absolutely perfect. In fact, it's not even meant to be perfect, which works out good for me because I'm still a newbie with the colored pencils. <laughs> so once I get to my lightest color, I'm just going to go over that entire petal with that white pencil again, going right over the areas that I've already colored and then fill in that highlight, which in this case is the tip of the petal. Moving on to the next one, going to again go in with a very light hand with my white pencil. And this petal is laying behind that first petal that we colored. So with my darkest color, I'm going to create a shadow with that, basically just outlining that first petal. Blending that out each time with my mid-tones and then finally going back or to my lightest color and then back to that white pencil. Again, filling in that highlight area and then going over the entire petal again. Now, when I go in with my pencil or my white pencil the second time, this is where I am using a pretty heavy hand because I want that white to kind of show through or right on top of what I had already colored. And you'll see why in a little bit. For this petal, this one is kind of folded over on itself, so I am creating a shadow for that little area too. And then once you go in with that white pencil, it kind of fills everything in and actually makes it it makes the petal look like it is folded. Next, well, I'm just going to kind of keep going around this same flower. Now, some of these petals are shaped a little bit differently. And you'll just want to look at the illustration itself. Typically, any illustration, whether it's this stamp set or any other stamp set, unless they're solid images, they're going to kind of guide you as far as where your shading should be. So if you see a petal folded over, that's going to create a shadow. If it's behind another petal, that will create a shadow. So you'll just really want to pay attention to the illustration itself. Sometimes you have to kind of step back and take a look at it. That's why I do one petal at a time with this particular method of coloring, I guess. And this is like a no line coloring. So whenever I do no line coloring, it's just easier for me to do one petal at a time. That way I don't really get lost in what I'm doing. So you can see that some of these are a little bit larger than the others, but I still, I don't want too much white showing. So for the larger petals, I do extend out my pinks a little bit further. And you'll see that I keep reaching for my pencil sharpener there. I'm constantly sharpening my pencils. I want to make sure that I have a really fine tip on them, especially for those little tiny areas with the shadows. I have a whole lot of colors to fit in some of these little tiny petals. You'll see that one that we just finished coloring there has a little notch on the top. And I went over that with my darkest color and blended it out in the same direction each time. It doesn't matter which direction you go, as long as you go in the same direction each time. And that will make it look as if it's kind of creased on the tip of the petal. 
Here I'm doing two petals at a time because I figured this was going to take me a very long time, which it did. I think the coloring took about an hour and a half total. So I'm doing two at a time here, but I'm making sure that the petals aren't touching one another because you're covering the entire thing in white first. It's easy to kind of lose where one petal ends and the other begins. So if you do more than one at a time, it's easiest just to work with petals that are not touching one another. For that one that's kind of tucked behind this one right here, there's going to be very little highlight on that one because it's mostly going to be in shadow being it's behind the other petals. And there's only a teeny tiny bit showing. Moving on to the last two petals here. This one is kind of curved a little bit. So my, my shading is going to be more on one side than the other to kind of go along with that curve and make it actually looked curved a little bit so it's not the end of the world if you guys don't pay attention to that kind of thing but it does give it more of a realistic look whether you're using pencils or copics or watercolor whatever you decide to use just make sure that you're using that illustration to your advantage it will guide you as far as where your shading should go so once this first flower was done, I will move on to the second flower, but I won't show you this entire thing, but I will show you just one petal, just so that you can see the color combinations I used in case you guys do use the polychromos. But I am doing the same exact thing as far as starting off with that white, then going in with the darkest color, mid-tones, lightest color, and then back to that white to the very end, covering up the entire petal. Like I said, I'm just going to show you this one here, and this is pretty basic. It has a little small shadow where it's hang where it's kind of tucked behind that other petal, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward as far as the shading goes, and pretty much all of the petals are going to be pretty similar to one another, um, so there wasn't anything special that I did with this particular flower except for a different color combination. And these are actually flesh tones, but I think they'll make pretty flowers, <laughs> so that's why I cho chose those. Once my coloring was complete for the flower petals themselves, for the inside or the center of the flowers, I guess, because we used a pigment ink, they're not as detailed anymore. So I'm just going to go in with one solid color, fill in that center, and kind of just put little dots around the outside. It's not going to be too noticeable, but it will add a little bit of color to the inside. If we didn't stamp with a pigment ink, we'd, we'd have a more detailed image. Next, we'll move on to the leaves. And again, just going to show you two of these leaves, but I'm pretty much doing them the same way. I did shade them a little bit different for this first one, covering up the entire thing with the white. And I'm going to color in the stem solid. I didn't bother to do any shading on the stem itself. But for this leaf, I'm going to concentrate my shading being on the base of the leaf and kind of up in the center so it's kind of, it would kind of be creased in the center. I'm not worried about the veins within the leaves. Uh, leaves. I'm coloring directly over them. I'm only using three different greens here and then finishing off with that white pencil going in with a pretty heavy hand going over that entire thing. I'll just show you one more leaf here because I shaded this one a little bit differently but I did um, start off with that white pencil but this time I'm going to put shading on the bottom and the tip of the leaf and this will kind of make it appear as if it's kind of bent or curved a little bit with the white pencil it's not so noticeable if we were to use just a highlight green it would be a little bit more noticeable but i did shade each one of the leaves just a little bit different depending on the shape of them and and if there wasn't any specific shape it's whatever i felt like doing <laughs> So I went ahead and finished up all of that coloring and we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment again just tapping that very lightly onto my ink pad. You'll see that I kind of turn that around to make sure I have good coverage before stamping that right there in the center. And now I wanted this to look like a chalkboard. So what I'm going to do and you can certainly use like a regular ink blending tool but I found that that's Sometimes you get those round circles from the ink blending tool itself. So I'm taking a paper towel and kind of just bunching it up, making sure that there's not too many creases, tapping that directly onto my ink pad and just rubbing that around my images to make it look like, like a dirty chalkboard basically. And now the more ink that you get on your paper towel, the more coverage you'll get. So just keep that in mind when you first start off, it might not even be 
noticeable at all. I just keep going. But if you get too much ink on your paper towel, then you'll want to either use another corner or just get a new one um, because then once it's down, you really can't get it up. You'll see that I have a fingerprint there <laughs> and I was trying to blend that out a little bit, but I wasn't able to. So what I ended up doing is I took my sand eraser very, very lightly to take that up and then tried to add a little bit more of that white pigment ink and that fingerprint just appeared again. <laughs> so I it was lighter than it was the first time. So I kind of just dealt with it. I took a little bit off with that sand eraser and I didn't add any more ink back to it and it seemed to work out. So I, I wanted a little bit of a border on my card. So I trimmed each four or four sides of this card panel, just a teeny tiny bit. I didn't do any measuring. I just took a tiny bit off of each side just because I wanted to have a white border. I didn't want my card to be completely black. So I took my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my panel flat down onto a white A2 size top folding note card. And that is it. That is the card for today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.